reading from the first letter of Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Let us give thanks to God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his great mercy, he gave us new life by raising Jesus Christ from the dead. This fills us with a living hope. And so we look forward to possessing the rich blessings that God keeps for his people. He keeps them for you in heaven, where they cannot decay or spoil or fade away. They are for you who through faith are kept safe by God's power for the salvation which is ready to be revealed at the end of time. Be glad, be glad about this, even though it may now be necessary for you to be sad for a while because of the many kinds of trial you suffer. Their purpose is to prove that your faith is genuine. Even gold, even gold which can be destroyed is tested by fire. And so your faith, which is much more precious than gold, must also be tested so that it may endure. Then you will receive praise and glory and honour on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed. You love him, although you have not seen him. You love him, although you have not seen him, and you believe in him, although you do not see him. So you re blah, blah. Be glad about this, even though it may now be necessary for you to be sad for a while because of the many kinds of trials you suffer. Their purpose is to prove that your faith is genuine. Even gold, which can be destroyed, is tested by fire, and so your faith, which is much more precious than gold, must also be tested so that it may endure. Then you will receive praise and glory and honour on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed. You love him, although you have not seen him, and you believe in him, although you do not now see him. So you rejoice with a great and glorious joy which words cannot express, because you are receiving the salvation of your souls, which is the purpose of your faith in him. Thanks be to God for his word. Welcome back, it's good to have you with us. If you have prepared some bread, uh, some wine or symbols of that, then we're going to share together in what is commonly called a love feast. A love feast, the technical name I suppose, for when we can't actually be present and share communion together. In Mr Wesley's societies, they were not permitted to share communion, but he instigated instead a love feast. It was an informal part of their gatherings where they would come together over food, they would give thanks for the faith, they would remember all that Christ had done for them. This is Wesley's account of preaching at Burslem in Stoke-on-Trent on Thursday the 29th of March in 1787. In the evening I preached at Burslem. Observing the people flocking together I began half an hour before the appointed time. But notwithstanding this, the house would not contain one half of the congregation. So while I was preaching in the house so that all could get in, John Broadbent preached in the yard to the rest. The love feast followed, but such as one I have not known for many years. While the two or three first spoke, the power of God so fell upon all that were present, some praying and others giving thanks, that their voices could scarce be heard. Two or three were speaking at a time, till I gently advised them to speak one at a time, and they did so, with amazing energy. Some of them had found peace a year ago, some within a month or a week, some within a day or two. And one of them, a potter's boy, told us. At the prayer meeting, I found myself dropping into hell, and I cried out to the Lord, and he showed me he loved me. But Satan came immediately and offered me a bag of money as long as my arm. But I said, get thee behind me, Satan. Perhaps that's something that we might consider. That when we remember what Christ has done for us, we don't simply remember it in bread and in wine. But we remember it 
in personal testimony, in sharing of the way in which we've been one for Christ and the way in which his love, his guiding spirit, guides and leads us on our own journey of faith and of life. But before we come to the words that we shall share, we sing again that beautiful Wesleyan hymn, Love Divine or Love's Excelling, Joy of Heaven to Earth Come Down. We are the people of God in this place, called to be salt and light, called to minister to our community and to care for our world. We do not attempt to do this in our own strength. We acknowledge our brokenness, our weakness, our failing before God. We acknowledge this we confess this and we lay this at the foot of the cross. We prepare to give up what we are and not look back on what we have been. We receive God's forgiveness and the assurance of God's love. We prepare to take on new life in him and to look forward to what we will become. We share peace not with an embrace, for we cannot come together. We share our deeper fellowship in Christ and a love that endures forever. Seek peace, my friends, no peace, my friends, the deep, deep peace of Jesus. Seek peace, my friends, no peace, my friends, the deep, deep peace of Jesus. And so we remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus sat at a table with his friends, enjoying their company 
and sharing the Passover meal. As the meal came to an end, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this and eat it. This represents my body, which is to be broken for you and for all people for the forgiveness of their sins. Whenever you do this, do this to remember me. When the meal had finished, our Lord Jesus took a cup of wine. He gave thanks to the Father and he gave it to them all to drink with these words. This is my blood. My blood will be poured out to mark a new beginning, a new agreement, a new covenant between all people and God. So do this whenever you drink it to remember me. In faith we remember and we celebrate with this bread and this wine. Jesus died for us. Jesus rose from the dead for us. And Jesus will come again for us. And so we pray, Heavenly Father, that you pour out your Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May this be for us a meal of transformation, that through his death we may know forgiveness, through his resurrection we may know wholeness, that through his coming again we may embody new life in him. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. The bread we break, we break for the broken in our church. The bread we break, we break for the broken in our community. The bread we break, we break for the broken in our world. So let us receive in faith with thanksgiving. The wine we take, we take for the restoration of our church, for the wholeness of our community, for the healing of our world. So let us receive in faith with thanksgiving. Come forward, come in faith, for all who long to know the Lord Jesus are welcome to receive at this his table. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ is broken for you. Thanks be to God. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ is poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sin. Amen. Thanks be to God. And so let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you gave yourself for us, that we might give ourselves for you, strengthened and enriched by this transforming meal. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. 
thank you again for being with us on Gower Praise. Much of what we glean from the history of the people called Methodists and the ministry of John and Charles Wesley can be gleaned from the journal of John Wesley, translated from his original notes. It is an incredible insight into the work of God and gives a snapshot of the revival uh, in our nation. As we go from here, we pray, we seek God earnestly for that faith again to come and move us in this time of crisis, in this time of uncertainty, to be a rock upon which our feet can be placed, that his spirit may lead us into all truth, free people from their sins, set them free, and know also the promise of eternal life. And so we close our praise on this Wesley Day with our final hymn, another written by Charles Wesley. Give me the faith that can remove and sink the mountain to a plain. Give me the Christ-like praying love that longs to build your house again.